Welcome back to What Matters This Week. I'm Lauren Maloney. It is the beginning of April. Mayor Moreau Weinberger is here for his monthly visit. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me back. Just a few days after your eighth State of the State address, State of the City address. Unbelievably, right? I can't believe there's been eight of them already. But it's at the beginning of the year, right? I've only been off this seven years, so. Stronger uh, than ever, you said. Stronger, certainly, I, I did say, and I, it certainly has felt this way to me, that we have been getting stronger each of the last seven years. You know, when it, it's, you know, people maybe sometimes forget when we came in, we basically were in the middle of a financial crisis. Yeah. Back in 2012, we were uh, about to, just after I came into office, we were downgraded to the edge of junk bond status. We were essentially 15 million dollars in the hole, and uh, in the, the last seven years, we've turned that around. The last audit we showed, we um, we're, we're very much in the black. Um, we have straightened our finances so much that we are going to be able to avoid having the tax increase that the voters just voted on and supported in March. We're going to be able to defer that for, for at least a year. We're going to be able to put some money without having to go to taxpayers. We're going to be able to buy a new fleet of uh, sidewalk plows, which is something we struggled with this last year. Our sidewalk snow plows. Snow dragons. BTV snow dragons. How like many to call them. snow dragons are there? There are 11, and I think over the next couple of years we'll buy eight new ones. Okay. This is good, detailed, hard-hitting journalism there, Lauren. You're the first to flush Thank that you. out. It's a, uh, uh, there are about eight of them are, that are almost 15 years old, and they, they were in the shop 50% of the time. They really slowed down our response during some of the storms this past year so in that way we're getting stronger i think certainly in terms of the economy we had a great year at the airport best one since the recession the downtown even as we go through this transition with city place had a record-breaking year in terms of the number of people coming to visit and stay in the hotels eat, eat and drink in burlington so that's very encouraging and then uh maybe the thing i'm most hopeful about is that we are making progress against these major social issues we have as well you know we think we've turned the corner with the opioid epidemic and we're seeing the numbers go in the right direction there even though we're still losing too many people um, we are opening new high quality child care slots in, the, in burlington as a result of these new efforts we've been pushing forward and and we're even making progress against something i think a lot of people had given up on in which is making housing more affordable in burlington we're seeing as after years of really pushing for the creation of new homes, particularly in the downtown, we're seeing vacancy rates go up a bit and, and rent prices stabilizing and even dropping in some cases. So I think there's a lot to be, uh, there's a lot I'm proud about, a lot that I feel is going in the right direction. That was a good overview. Um, <laughs> let, let's take a look at some of those key points. Okay. Um, three new city councilors sworn in. Yes. How is the path forward as far as we've got some progressive faces on the uh, council now? As yeah. Well? You know, we're just going to have to see. I, I, I know a lot of people think there's some, been some dramatic change here. For, from my perspective, since I was elected, no party has ever dominated on the city council. The way we have made progress over the last seven years is to uh, put our partisan differences aside and, and sit down at that big U-shaped table in Contoy's Auditorium and City Hall and uh, find areas of agreement, find, find ways to move the ball and move forward. And I'm pretty hopeful that that's what's going to happen again here. And I mean, and if you look at what these candidates ran on that were elected, they were ran on doing something about climate change, they were ran, ran on doing something about housing. These are issues that I very much agree with and, and, and have been talking about for a long time. So uh, I, I welcome some new blood on the council. New, it's, it's a younger council than we've seen in a long time. I think it's going to be an interesting, exciting year. When it comes to opioids, you and I talked the last time, um, opioid-related overdose deaths in Chittenden County have dropped um, by 50%. Um, something that you started um, just literally a day after the state of the city was basically social workers kind of screening people who are arrested for any kind of addiction. Any, I know it's early, but right. any update on, on how that's going so far? Yeah, I got a briefing uh, today on that. And on the first day, we didn't arrest anybody during the daylight hours, apparently. So there's no, uh, <laughs> there's no update yet. Um, uh, but here's, here's, here's what's interesting about this. We know a lot of people who commit crimes uh, have, have opioid addictions. Mm -hmm. it's, um, you see that in the prison population, where a very substantial number of the people who are in prison are now benefiting from this new treatment program Vermont has to, to get people on a medically assisted treatment while they're in prison. We think that the idea here is it shouldn't 
only be the people who are getting sent to jail um, that we're helping and we're trying to find a better path for. Uh, well, this, this basically makes sure that anyone who comes into contact with the criminal justice system is screened for an opi opioid use disorder and if they screen positive is given the opportunity to um, go into medically assisted treatment. Um, we know your chance of uh, dying from an overdose goes down dramatically if you're getting treatment. Um, what we talk less about, but it makes this, I think, very much a criminal justice issue is people who are in treatment are also less likely to commit crimes. They are more likely to be able to return and hold down a productive job, be a good parent. So uh, we're hopeful about this strategy. We think um, that there are, we're going to find that a lot of the people who the police come into cap contact with uh, could benefit from treatment, and we're, we're going to try this. So, you know, and it may not work. You know, we've had other things in this effort that we've experimented with and uh, haven't panned out, but we're in a, we're, from our perspective, my perspective, the chief's perspective, this is an emergency. You know, we are, we are seeing people die at unprecedented rates in this country, and we need to be aggressive and, and experiment and try new things, and that's what we're doing with this new program. Any new hires involved in this, or is it updated training? It, well, uh, great question. No new hires yet. We already have, um, s for the last three years, had a social worker. Department. Yes, we've had these additional. So basically, we're using existing staff to do these screens that happen during daylight hours. Um, if we are going to expand it into the evening and overnight hours, um, we may eventually have to add some capacity. We are putting out some grant. Uh, applications and whatnot um, to, to try to get some help with doing this. But so far, we, yes, we're not, we're not spending any additional taxpayer dollars um, pursuing this uh, pilot. We'll be right back with more from the mayor, including his plan to address high housing costs.